Hi guys, how are you going? This is Tash. Hi, Tash the Starcross Stitcher. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since my last video. It's, I've been busy. Um, I haven't had much time to make a video and I actually haven't been doing as much stitching this month as I usually do so um, yeah I don't have too much to show you today. I'm homesick from work today. I've got an ear infection and a throat infection um, and it's really painful. So I'm not feeling that well, so I'll try and keep it short because I don't have much to show you anyway, so that's fine. Um, yeah, I haven't been stitching that much, which is why I don't have that much to show you. Like, so I figured out in January, I stitched 123 and a half hours in January, which, um, let me just do a little maths, actually, I'll get up the calculator and figure that out. Hold on. Okay, so I just did... A little bit of maths and I figured out that I stitched 123 hours in January 123 and a half there were 744 hours in the whole of January and I stitched for 16.6 percent of them is that crazy that's like a sixth of the month spent stitching that's quite a lot I don't know if that's a lot it seems like a lot to me um, it's more than I've done for the past 10 years combined so that's great or well, the past nine years, okay. Um, but I'll show you my whips since last time and what I finished and stuff. So I worked a bit on Celtic Sampler, which is this one by The Needles Praise. Um, I've been posting my progress on this on um, Instagram and Facebook and there have been so, so many people who are into this. They all want to do it. They all want to get the chart and I can't find it anywhere. I haven't been able to help anyone to find it. It's really, it's really difficult. Um, I've, I'm sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> um, I think it's out of print. Sorry. Um, but I'll show you what I've done. It looks so pretty, doesn't it? I can actually see what I'm showing you in the screen today because I turned my camera around, my phone around, so I can see what's on the screen. I don't know why I didn't do that before. But anyway, yeah, so my aim for this is to stitch two parts per month. Um, uh, and it actually does go on. There's a second part that goes over on this side of the fabric. Um, and I will do the second part. But to do... If I go two parts per month um, and do the whole thing, I think that's about 49 parts. So it'll still take me two years. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Um, but I'm loving it. It's so fun. I'll show you what I did for January, which was... I finished... Oh, it's not very solid. I finished off this one, which is solid queen stitches. I don't know if you'll be able to see the in a close up there if it's going to focus or not. Anyway, that bit is solid queen stitches. Um, and because that took me so long and I hate queen stitches so much, as we've discussed before, um, for the rest of January, I also did the, the one below it. Um, there's a lot of empty parts still to do in that one. Same with this one in the middle, all these white parts. Uh, those are to be filled in with metallics. Um, I've got some gold japan thread and crinics and things to go on this. Um, so I can't do those until the end unfortunately, that's what the instructions say. And I'll probably wash it before I do those. Um, yeah, so I did those two for January, these two here. And for February I did the two at the bottom here. This one and this one. This one is um, these little knots here, they're actually all done in running stitch and it was completely reversible just the back stitch part totally reversible it looked very cool um on the back right now yeah i can't really show you it's messy and it all got covered up by the other stitches anyway so you can't tell um then um all the blue stitches were cross stitches all the green stitches were reversible cross stitch yeah reversible cross stitch which took a little longer and then in between, you can see on the corners, they're little, I think they're rice stitches, yes. Because if you look, you can see it's like a great big cross, and each great big cross is, is crossed over on each corner by a smaller cross. That's a rice stitch. I think that's really blurry. And um, around the actual knots there, it's just tiny little tent stitches. Um, and this one, it's called Irish Stitch, which I always thought was Bargello or Bargello. <laughs> I don't know what the difference is between Irish Stitch and Bargello, but 
This is called Iris Stitch and it's really pretty and I love it and the colours are gorgeous and I'm in love with this piece and I can't wait for March so I can pull it out again and do two more, <laughs> two more sections. Um, I don't know which sections I'm going to do yet in March. This section down here, at the bottom there, that's for my initials. Um, and there's another section on the other part at the top corner that is for the date. So I'll do those at the end. Um, so I might tackle one of the larger parts that's fully queen stitch. I know that this one up here is fully queen stitch. I might not tackle that one. I think this one in the corner here is fully queen stitch. So I might do that one. And this one. Probably those two. Yeah. Okay. So that's Celtic Sampler. I love that one. It's still my favourite whip. I love it. Um... I've been working on Firefly Fairies and I I spent I did spend a lot of hours on this but there is not a lot of progress to show unfortunately um, I did oops there goes the needle winder oops um, so a lot of what I did was actually metallics through this dress they're all chronics I hate them um, there is treasure braid but it's the chronics that I really hate um, I did a lot of metallics and chronics up around the candle shines here and up at the top and all across this dress here, down the side here, into this dress. So almost all of the chronics are done on the green fairy, the pink fairy and around them. So there's more to do in the middle, more to do on her, more to do on this side when she's done. But I've made a lot of progress with the chronics and it just took hours it takes so long to work with that stuff and there's so much of it you don't realize until you pick it up and start working on it again there is so much of it uh, um uh, oh my my ear hurts um yeah but i've actually noticed a problem with the chronics because i stitched a lot of it um probably 10 years ago like i'm really thinking the last time i worked on this was probably 2007 or even earlier um so some of the chronics have been sitting here in the fabric exposed to air for 10 years um, and also when I stitched them they would have been exposed to the oils in my hand and I probably used thread heaven um, I don't know what's caused it but some of the chronics have actually changed color over time and I noticed that because I was stitching the same color again right next to it so I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this I might have to stand up excuse the pajama pants it's not the scientist kitty pajamas apologies because they're the cutest ones so if you look at this one here, this star, the four little silver chronic dots around it, they're sort of tarnished compared to this star, which I stitched last week. These four silver chronics around it, it's a totally different colour. Now it's the same spool of thread. The spool has been um, in a Ziploc bag for the last 10 years, but the stitches in the fabric haven't been. So now I'm thinking I do not want to unpull, <laughs> pick out all of those silver stitches all the way across this green fairy. I mean, I'm looking on the video, you can't even see how, how much chronic is in this, it's crazy. There's a lot of silver chronic that I've already done. And am I unpicking it? Hell no. <laughs> oh, Stitcherista says, whole lot of nope on that. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I'm not unpicking that, no way. So um, I might just, just unpick this one star since it's so close to the other star. Um, so all on the pink fairy, it's all the new silver, and all on the green fairy and up the top, it's all the old chronic. I'm thinking I might also unpick right in the little candle shines here to make that into the white, the new fresh white chronic. Um, but then I'm thinking it's probably going to discolor again in a few years, so what's the point? I don't know. Anyway, I didn't know that happened to chronic, so that's just like a warning for anyone who didn't know. Yeah, so I also um, obviously got some of the blue fairy done, not very much, just her sleeve and her hat. Um, she's got a great big pink bow on her back, lots of chronics. So I'm thinking next time I pull this out, which will probably be at the end of this month or early next month. So when I do that, I'm hoping to finish off her dress. Then I just need to finish off the chronics and then do the beading, which is going to take a while because there are a lot of beads in this. It's funny, like I think, I keep thinking, oh, it's so close to done, but, but I can just work for hours and hours and hours on the metallics and I just, when you look at it, you don't realise there's that much work still to do on it. It's disheartening sometimes. <laughs> um, so I actually put that away 
before. Like, I wanted to get more done on it before I put it away, but I was just getting really, really bored of it. I'm sorry if the camera just shook and if it's kind of not straight. I've got a new tripod and I'm sort of not sure what the best way to do it is and so on. Anyway. Anyway. Um, so I put that away and I got something else out. Um, and what I got out was one of the pieces I wanted, a whip, an old whip that I wanted to finish this year. And it was this. Uh, let's get rid of the glare. Can I? That's a Schwarm white work piece. Schwarm is German white work. Um, I started this at Beating Around the Bush in 2014. I did a two day class with Deborah Love. Um, it is. Yeah, I don't have much information about this. <laughs> it's Schwarm, Schwarm white work. Um, and it's on a 30 count Belgium fabric, it's called. Um, and here is what I've done. So when I picked it up, I had this big flower done. I have these two, that leaf and this leaf done. Um, so I, I hadn't done some of the little embellishments on the edge of this flower. I hadn't done any of the stalks. I hadn't done any of this flower. So I did a lot. But um, this is quite monotonous and repetitive and slow going. Like for around each of these flower petals is Elizabethan chain stitch, which that's okay, that doesn't take too long. But then around the Elizabethan chain stitch, around every petal and all the way down on all the stems is something called a coral knot, um, which is kind of annoying and not, not that fun to do. Those eyelets in the rose in the flower petals were taking me forever. So um, I was kind of, I worked on this for a few days and then I was just getting quite sick of it. And I just had to put it down because I actually spent two days of not doing any stitching because I just didn't want to work on it. Um, and when I start doing that, when I have to work on something, I make myself work on it, that's when my stitchy bug goes. So I put it away. Um, I'll, I will get it out again. I might not finish it this month. Maybe I will. I'm not sure. Um, but it, there's, there's not a whole lot of hours left in to put into it. Like I just have to do this at the top of the three flowers and then do some um, extra stems and on the stems they've got like little lazy daisies and things hanging off them and that's oh and the center of the flower and the rest of the petals and that's it really and then it will be basic yeah then it will be done so there isn't a lot more to do a few uh, like three more days work maybe probably eight less than eight hours of work so I, I may finish it this month we'll see um then the last thing hang on yeah, the last thing I've worked on this month, I've done like nothing this month, and it's, well, it's only halfway through, I have time. Um, the last thing I've been working on this month is my round robin piece. Um, so I'm doing a round robin in a Facebook group called, I think it's just called Cross Stitch Round Robins. I will link it below in the doobly-doo. Um, so my group is all Australian stitches. And unfortunately, there weren't enough participants from Australia, so we only have three people in our group. And I had a plan for a four-part round robin that was going to be really nice, but um, I ended up changing my plans. And I've actually chosen to do a piece that will have 12 parts when it's done. And I'm hoping to send this piece on this round robin to the three people who are, who are on it. And then when I get it back, I'll send it on the next round robin to more people. And so on, until all the 12 parts are done. Um... And I think that'll be really nice, and when it comes back, it'll look like this. It's by Long Dog Samplers, it's called Quaker's Dozen. It's very cool. Um, and I thought, it's really nice, each person can do one, one, moti one of the big motifs, and then each person can also do a small triangle or a diamond, like put their name in it, like first name and location, or just initials, or whatever they want. Um, and when it comes back, it'll have gone all around the world, hopefully, and I'll have made a lot of new friends, and it'll be really nice. So, what I've been working... I started this on... I went to um, the Crafty Frog on Tuesday, the 14th of February, and I bought um, some threads that I'm going to use for it. I'm using 16 count white ada, because for round robins you have to be pretty um, flexible with your threads and ada. Um, I'll, actually, I'll show you what I've done. I'm working on the borders. 
which is taking quite a long time. Um, so, as you can see, each person will stitch one, two, three, four, five, six. That's basically the first six parts map mapped out well enough there. I could stop doing borders now if I wanted. That's enough for people to figure out. Um, and as you can see, I'm doing it in like a peacock blue color. It's 3809, DMC 3809. I'm going to get everybody to do the actual um, motif in a variegated, a DMC variegated 4025. So I hope you can see that. It's really, really gorgeous peacock colors. So the 3809 is the darkest color in the variegated If you can see there, yeah, I think the colour's showing up pretty well. It's so pretty. So 3809 for the borders, which is the darkest variegation colour, and then the actual motifs will be in the variegated. And it'll look really pretty. So yeah, I've been working on that for the last couple of days. Um, I'm hoping to finish... I might not finish all the borders because I'm lazy. Um... But I'll finish off my motif and I'll do, you know, enough borders so people can choose at least from probably the top six motifs when they receive it. Um, the one I'm going to do before I send it away is going to actually be this one here. And I want to do that one so I can... I want to change the JL to my initials. And I want to change the year, obviously, to 2017. Even though this might not get finished in 2017, I'll still change it. Um, and then I'll, maybe I'll use one of the small little triangles to put the year start and finished and I don't know. I'm really happy with this. I think it's going to be really nice. Um, as I'm stitching it, I'm actually wondering if the motifs are a bit bigger than what's technically allowed in the round robin. They said 60 by 60 and I think this is 69 by 69 for each, for each motif. Um, but... I'm just going to say to the people who participate, I apologise, and if you can't finish it, please don't feel pressure to, I'll be happy to finish it when it gets back to me, so, yeah. Anyway, that's Quaker's Dozen. I'm really happy with that one. I'm happy with the colours, and I'm happy with my choice. And I'm, I've seen what the other girls on the round robin are stitching, and it looks really nice, and I can't wait to stitch on both of them. So that's good. I like round robins. I've been, um, oh, should I say this on the video? You know how when you send a round robin, you like have to, you don't have to, but I'm going to put in a few little gifts. So I asked the girls what their favourite colour is. And I'm going to get like um, a variegated thread and a packet of beads and a chronic and maybe a pair of scissors in that colour and give them a little coloured care package. That's something I've done a few times. It's really nice. So that's all I've been working on. No. Oh, no, no. I have two, two finishes, two FFOs. One is a finish from last month that I haven't shown you yet, and one is an FFO. So, I'll do the FFO first. It's just framing. I had to actually lace this in order to frame it. This is from Heaven and Earth Designs. Ooh. How can I? There you go. It's from Heaven and Earth Designs. It's called Scent of Enchantment. It was a quick stitch. The QS. Um, it's really tiny. It was only... I think 60 by 100 stitches. Um, there you go. Yeah, so I just laced this around some matte board and framed it. Um, and I'm really happy with it. I really like it. I'm actually just realizing there's a chip on the frame in the top corner, which is a big bummer. The bottom corners look okay, so I might have to flip it around in the frame so that that bit sits on the table. Um, I don't know where I'm going to put this in my house. But I still like that it's framed. It feels like it's safer and more protected in here. Um, so even if it does go back in a box or a drawer, as it is, at least it's protected in the frame. I feel like that's better. The frame's too big, as you can see, but it's very hard to find. I would have needed like a three and a half centimeter by six centimeter or something like that. And I can't just can't find anything that small. And at least that kind of had an even amount of white fabric showing around each side. Um, anyway, I'm happy with that. I have never framed anything myself before, so there you go. First time for everything. I actually framed something else. This is the Valentine's Day I did for um, my boyfriend, Tim. Hi, Tim. I know he's watching now because 
He said he wasn't going to watch until after Valentine's Day so that this would be a surprise. Um, um, I hope he still doesn't watch because I'm going to be self-conscious, but never mind, too late now. Um, so I finished the cross stitch for him um, and I'll, sh I'll, I'll show it on the screen but I'm not going to read it aloud because it's not obscene or anything but it's a, a bit of a funny adult joke. So don't let the kids read it. If you don't know who that is, that's a Pokemon character called Pikachu. So if you read it, I Pikachu, when you're... Okay, I think you get it. <laughs> I think you get the joke. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I framed that. I had to also lace it around some mat board. I bought the pattern from Duct Tape Stitches on Etsy. I will put a link in the doobly doo. Duct Tape Stitches. I got the pattern from there. I had to make some changes because the DMC conversion they provided was really inaccurate colours. Um, like the, it was really, well, it was just different from what the picture was. It wanted me to stitch like a light dusty pink for the words and the colours of his mouth were very strange. And um, I also added some backstitch to Pikachu himself because, I don't, I don't know, he just um, wasn't that clear without the backstitch. So I'm pretty happy that I added that. Sorry, the glare. It's really good that I can uh, that I actually turn the, the phone around so I can see what I'm recording now. Because I noticed in all my videos there's been glare on everything I've shown you and it's annoying. So hopefully now I can see what I'm recording. I won't have to stick pictures over the top all the time. Let's see. Um, so I've, what else? I've got my little notes here about what to talk about. <laughs> so I've done... My FFOs, that's those two. One of those was a finish for last month. I've done my four whips. One of them was a new start, the Quaker's Dozen. Tomorrow is the 17th of February, and I'm doing the, the year of start stitch along in Stitch Mania, which means that tomorrow I have to have another new start. I made a mistake. I should have left this Quaker's Dozen round robin piece for tomorrow. I should have started it tomorrow. Instead I started it on the 14th because I couldn't wait three days. I just have no patience. Um, I also really wanted to start that because it has to be posted on the 28th um, and I, I just didn't want to be rushing it. Um, so I have to have a new start tomorrow and I'm wondering, I need people's opinion. Um, if I do If I start a, a section on a round robin that's currently a whip for me, like my heaven and earth designs round robin, seven parts of it are done, just the eighth part isn't done. If I start my part, my final part on the round robin, is that a new start? Does that count? I think it might because it's a whole new chart. It's a whole new chart and I don't know, does it count as a new start? It's currently, you know, it's obviously a whip in terms of like my rotation and my stitching pieces but if I start that thing does that count as a new start for the purposes of new new year new start because the thing is I can actually finish that pretty quickly and I want to finish that this year anyway so I wouldn't be adding extra pieces to my goal to my you know to-do list I don't know can you tell me what you think down below and I'll decide tomorrow I might have to ask on the stitch along um, event page as well on Facebook um, if I can't start that, I guess I'll just start um, that little sugar skull from Mill Hill. I have a little su beaded sugar skull kit from Mill Hill. It's tiny, it's like that big. Um, so I'll start that if I can't start the Heaven and Earth Designs Round Robin one. Because that will be fast as well. Um, so that'll be tomorrow. New start, yay! I love new starts. I'm not that upset that I get two new starts this month. I can't really get, let myself get too upset about it. Um, so that's finishes, FFOs, whips, new starts, purchases, um, oh, do you remember last time I was complaining about my ABC Stitch order? I had some threads, some patterns and stuff on order from ABC Stitch and I had ordered it and not heard a thing after I ordered it, not a word, not thank you for, well, you know, I got the receipt, the invoice or whatever. Um, but they didn't, it had been two weeks and they hadn't said, listen, sorry, there's going to be a delay because we're just waiting on this chart to come in or whatever. 
So I emailed them for an update. I said, what's, can you let me know what's holding it up? And they said they were still waiting on like half of the order. And the guy at first, he said, oh, well, the waiting time for charts will be this long, for threads will be this long, and for other things will be this so long, five weeks or whatever. And I was like, okay, well, that's fine. But it would have been good if you told me in the beginning, these are the items that we're currently waiting on, you know, when I ordered it. Why didn't they say we're currently waiting on this thread and these two charts? So the wait's going to be about five weeks. And then at the time of ordering, I can say, listen, I can't wait that long. I'll get it from somewhere else. But they didn't do that. They didn't say a word to me until I asked them. So first of all, he just said, well, if it's a, he didn't know what was, what it was waiting on. Then I asked him to specify what it was, because I thought maybe I can just, if it's just a chart, I can take it off. But if it's a thread, I have to wait. I mean, he came back to me and it was basically all the threads and, and all, it was like nearly the whole order was still waiting. So I said, I'd just like to cancel it, please. I, you know, this is the thing that annoys me more than the waiting is the lack of communication. Um, so I was really disappointed with that. I was really, that was a bad experience. I didn't like it. So I'll stick to one, two, three stitch in future. Like at least with a shop like Stitching Bits and Bobs, they're slow, but they do tell you, you know, we, we have to order this chart in, it'll be a while, sorry. You know, at least I know what's going on. They didn't do that at ABC Stitch, so I was disappointed with that. Um, so I cancelled that order. So I still haven't yet reordered um, the threads I'm waiting on, which are the silks for Siren Jady, um, which is, I'll put in the picture here. It's from the Sampler Cove, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, the Sampler Cove, I think. Um, and it's on black fabric, which I have, in silks, which I have some of, and it's a Thai. Um, they're Thai motifs from Thailand because I went on my holiday to Thailand. I've been looking for something Thai to stitch, so when I get those threads, I'll be able to start that one. Um, what else? And the only other thing I've bought. Well, the only other thing I've received since my last video is these threads for Quaker's Dozen and the fabric for Quaker's Dozen that I went and bought at the Crafty Frog on Tuesday. It was $15 worth of fabric and 10 ish dollars worth of threads, so yeah. So I would say I've been really good, except I know I haven't because I've ordered a ton of things online, they just haven't arrived here yet. So next time I might have a lot of haul to show you, we'll see. I've bought quite a lot of fabric. I think I'm rocking the camera a lot. I'm really sorry. I'm going to not lean on the table. Um, so that's purchases. Uh, wish list. Okay, oh my gosh. The new Mirabilia just came out like a few hours ago this morning. I saw a preview of it last night. It was this tiny little blurry picture from the top of the embellishment pack. And then um, this morning when I woke up, someone had posted it on a couple of groups. And it's really pretty. It's, I'll put a picture up here. It's called Andromeda. It's like um, a girl just sitting on a rock on the ocean. It's really nice. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Um, it's really weird. It looks like it's not um, fussy, like luxury, like, you know, mirabilia is like flowing fabrics and luxurious and covered in beads and stuff. I have no doubt that this has plenty of beads and sparkle, but it's not that huge flowy dress and full of excess and stuff. It's more sort of simplistic. It almost looks like it's for a, mili for a mirabilia. It looks a little unfinished. I don't know. Um, but I think it's really pretty. I really like the sort of a little more minimal look of that. It's very nice. Um, and speaking of mirabilia, I'm going to the retreat um, in May. I've just made my full payment now. Um, I'm getting the exclusive pattern that she'll be designing for that. I'm getting the kit for that, so I'm hoping to start that on the retreat. But I'm being really tempted by so many other people stitching other mirabilia things. I saw, oh, what's her name? Someone is working on Persephone by Mirabilia. I'll put a photo up here of what she looks like. Um, and she is just gorgeous. The detail in her hair and her face. She's so pretty. She's gorgeous. And I've always liked the wallpaper at the back of her. But above, oh, I love her. I love her. I love her. I want to do her. The biggest problem with starting a mirabilia is choosing which one you want to do the most. I think it was actually Jessie Marie who started that one. I think it was. 
Um, so thanks Jessie Marie for enabling me. Um, and another piece that has well and like really firmly planted its feet in my wish list is um, <clears throat> the Singer Sampler series by Silver Creek Samplers. I'll put a photo up here. Um, as you can see, it's obviously just the do re mi fa se la ti do, um, the, with the words from the song from The Sound of Music. It's really cute, and I'm a big, oh, I'm not a big musician. I play piano. I used to sing. Um, I used to play piano. I don't have a piano in this house at the moment, so. Um, but yeah, I love it. It's very pretty and cute, and musical and I think it would actually be a nice thing up on the wall. I actually think I would put that on my piano or above my piano or something. I love that. It's very nice. Um, so yeah, that's on my wish list. Um, so yeah, I might be buying those soon. Something else I have to buy this month also is it's my mum's birthday coming up um, in March and she she's a quilter now. She used to do a lot of cross stitching. Um, but she's really got her eye on a few amazing things. She really liked... Hi, I'm back. Oh, my camera cut me off. There's apparently a size limit of four gigabytes on videos. It's the, the file size limit. Um, yeah, so I was talking about what, my, what I'm gonna buy my mum for her birthday in March. Um, and I think I'm going to get her the Rosewood Manor inspiration chart, which looks like this photo right here um, um, and I'll kit it up for her as well so I'll buy her the actually she has all the DMC threads so I might only have to buy her the fabric and I'm also gonna buy her a few cute needle minders because she's been admiring mine um, her even though she used to be a quilter even though she used to stitch now she quilts she keeps sh sending me pictures of things she wants um, that she sees on cross stitching sites and on everybody's Instagram feeds and so on. I think at heart she'll always be a bit of a stitcher. She just doesn't make time for stitching anymore. Um, so that's kind of all. Um, on Saturday I'm going to the Canberra Cross Stitches get together which will be great fun. I'm gonna take my bag of whips and show some stuff off. That'll be fun. Um, then the first weekend in March I'm heading up to Sydney which is about a three hour drive from here. Um, to go to the Stitches and Craft show in Rose Hill. That'll be fun. I'll spend some money. Or I might not, because I might not have any money left by then. Payday was like... yesterday. <laughs> and I, I've spent most of my money already. I mean, most of it went on bills, but still. It, does that, I'm sure that happens to everyone. Please tell me it happens to you so I don't feel as terrible. Um, that's Saturday. That's and the Stitches and Craft show. So I'll have some fun stitchy experiences coming up this month. Um, don't forget to go and watch my last video and enter the giveaway for the silk, um, the Vietnamese silk thread. Um, the giveaway is still open until March 1st. All you have to do is watch the video and you'll see the instructions on how to enter the giveaway. Um, that's all I have to say. I don't know when my next video will be. As I always tell you, it will probably be when I draw the giveaway on the 1st of March, so make sure you enter before the 1st of March. Do it if you if you want the silk. If you don't want the silk, don't bother. Um, yeah, so have a great stitchy time, a couple of weeks, until the 1st of March, and I'll see you then. Bye!